Want to know how to make a pitch in under two minutes or the questions you should ask before you invest? Well, a new book aims to help. It's called Wise Words, Lessons in Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital. Its author is Sean Wise. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Sean, let me go right at it. This is a phenomenal book because it gets at one of the core issues of being an entrepreneur. You only get a few minutes to capture someone's imagination when you're asking them for money. Tell us about what the attributes are of successful pitchmen. Well, as you know from your time in the Dragon's Den, you get about two minutes to capture someone's attention or they start with their Blackberry. So most elevator pitches have two key elements, the pain statement and the value proposition. And once you get those in line, then you can start focusing on the four criteria that make a good elevator pitch. Can people really learn this? I mean, there are people who invent concepts and there are people who know how to sell them. If you are in the, the former category and you don't know how to sell, can you actually learn it or are you just out of luck? You can 100% learn how to pitch well. An inventor makes a good product. An entrepreneur makes a good pitch. There's an easy way to learn how to pitch. First, start with why people buy your product. Yeah. Figure out what it is that motivates them. The bigger the pain, the faster you will sell the product. The bigger the pain, the easier it will be to attract investment. Then follow that with the value proposition. Make sure you hit four key criteria. First, make sure it's succinct. You only get two minutes or so. Second, make sure it's irrefutable. Don't put any technology talk in there. Make sure your grandma and your grandkids both get it. Then you turn your mind to making sure that it is easy to understand. You want to really make sure that everyone gets the whole idea behind what you're doing. And finally, and Kevin, you know this better than anyone else, you want to make sure it's greed-inducing. You have to tell investors how to make money and how they're going to make lots of it. Sean, there's another element that I think you've become aware of watching the mistakes being made on the Dragon's Den by pitchers. People ask too much for the value of just an idea. Why are they so dumb? Well, I don't think it's a matter of dumb. I think they don't really understand how valuation works. If you look on the cover of the book, the first lesson that I want people to learn is don't overvalue your business. They want you to pay for their sweat equity, but they don't realize that your money comes from your sweat equity. So they overvalue what they're doing. They don't understand that valuation is really based on two things. Intrinsic factors, how much revenue do you have? What are your patents? How big can the business get? But extrinsic factors play a huge role too. What other opportunities do you have to do with your money? Can you buy those Ontario bonds you were mentioning earlier? Should you buy into Yahoo? Or should you go with this young startup? People want to think it's all about themselves, but Dale Carnegie said it best really about the other person. Now, you are in this space of connecting uh, the entrepreneurs with some of the capital. How, how easily does that fit together? How often do they meet and successfully make a partnership that then goes on to fruition? Well, venture capitalists typically see about 300 plans a year. So a company like Ventures West or GrowthWorks would see about 300 fund, funding opportunities a year. Uh, they'll only do two or three deals a year. So it's really about zeroing in on what they're looking for. One of the things that I always advise when I'm teaching the class on how to raise capital is figure out what they're buying. Look at their past history. Don't look at the propaganda and the marketing materials. Look at what deals they've done press releases on, see where their interests lie, and then match up the entrepreneurs. Most people want to use a shotgun. They want to walk around and throw out the business plan, and whoever you know gets it, gets it. It's not the right way to go. You want to zero in on the people who have an interest in your space. Sean, there's been some very interesting statistics that just came out last week from Broadview Associates, and I, as an investor in venture deals, really took heart to this. It simply said this, 72% of the deals over the last four years were sold for less than $150 million after they were startups. In other words, if you sp pay more than 10 times, $10 million pre-money value, you'll never make seven times on your money, which you deserve when you take the risk in a lot of these deals. Absolutely agree. You have to understand that your investors have other opportunities. If they want to make 10% a year, they'll buy a bond. If they want to invest in a startup, you better be offering them 10 times their returns. Because even the best investors, yourself included, you're going to only get 2 out of 10 right. Venture capital is an interesting business. It's the only place in the world where you can be an expert if you only get 2 out of 10 right. They have to make up for the 8 that don't do well. And that's why you need a 10 times return. Can you repitch somebody you've pitched badly before? I don't really think you can. I think once you've soured the milk, no one wants to drink it. I don't really think it's possible. You make a bad first impression, there's just too many other opportunities out there. How important is the PowerPoint? Because that's what's get left behind, right? I think the PowerPoint's really important, but people don't start with the PowerPoint. You start with your elevator pitch and your pictogram, your sort of back of the napkin diagram. You need to be able to have a conversation with an investor over a beer, over a coffee, and lay out the vision of it. Then you can go to the 10 magic slides that everyone uses to raise capital. But first, you have to suck people in. You have to get them aligned with your interests. 
Once you set that foundation, you can only go up from there. We've only got about 10 seconds, but who should read your book? Is it entrepreneurs? Is it people who aren't yet entrepreneurs? Who, who are you after? There's three main groups that one should read the book. I, of course, want everyone to read the yep. book. But people who are going to make pitches, which isn't just entrepreneurs. It's people inside big corporations that are pitching new products. Second, it's investors. Investors who want to be able to tell the good from the bad. And third, those people who serve the entrepreneurial ecosystem, the lawyers, the accountants. You've got to give this advice because you don't want good deals to slip through the cracks because you don't know how to pitch. I guess not surprising that you make a good pitch. Good to be good to have you here, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Thanks Sean very much. Sean Wise is the author of Wise Words, Lessons in Entrepreneurship and Venture Capital. Stay with us. We're back after this.